Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Crew, and welcome back to Y2K. Previously, we went looking for an android, and we found a lot of confusion. And now, I will ask you not to enter any of the rooms on our left or right. Inside are the various parallel lives that your soul is currently engaged in. I believe it would be traumatic for you to experience them at this point in your life. Our destination is at the far end of this hall. That room is the one used to chronicle the past and future of this Alex. The one I am speaking to now. My favorite. Weird. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into these side doors. You told me not- okay. You know, that's one thing I not so subtly noticed. All the characters except for Alex and Vela became completely irrelevant now outside their introduction. The other rooms had you in them. Why aren't I here? You are, and you are speaking. What I'm about to show you is something that lies at the heart of all of yourselves. Please, prepare yourself for a harsh amount of bitter truth. What you are about to see cannot be unseen. Oh no, I saw this game. Should I... be worried? No. Not if you took to heart what I have taught you. What do you mean? What have you taught me? Absolutely nothing. To recognize your flaws and work to correct them, I am about to show you your greatest flaw of all. Destruction! Oh boy. What if the game wasn't really a game? What if this was actually was another parallel dimension of Alex's life? And since Alex himself is destruction, he made a game that was explicitly extremely flawed and destructive. It was a normal day just like any other. And the sky lit up and we were overcome by a bright aura. My soul left my body as my body disappeared. Where am I now? It tells me nothing. All I know is it's the Ark of the Covenant. Something weird like that. I was cut off guard when the end came. It was like a thief in the night. That's what my mom would say. But she's gone too. I've gone away just like my body, my son, the moon, and the stars. Alex is the cause of the Y2K apocalypse. I get it. It was a normal day just like any other. Where am I now? No, this is a new one right here. When you came for us, it was just we'd come for ourselves. Our tab was being collected on and we all realized we deserved this. Perhaps you didn't. You were just like the rest of us, only you took the blame. I wish I could turn back time. It's a curious thing, losing your body in the universe. It's how it aims all mine. We don't have a good way of describing reality, so we show it as the Earth. Since that's all most people ever know. I'm sorry it came down to this. You tried your best. I would do it too. In fact, maybe I did. Alex, you blew up the world and made it some kind of crummy video game. She said we must defeat ourselves in order to tame the destruction. But maybe she never understood us at all. I'm you, another Alex with fire hands. I don't understand. How is this my flaw? In a way, it is everyone's flaw. Destruction. To be destruction or to be creation. We can only be one in the end. But what will I destroy? This reality as you have destroyed many realities before this one. How could I destroy reality? What powers do I have that could lead to this type of devastation? Inaction is just as much an act of aggression as taking up arms. That makes no sense in this context. That's then, not to be used that way. Will this happen? 
How will I do this? I do not know. But what's important is that it hasn't happened yet, and... Wait, you're saying we can still stop this? No. Your reality was doomed long ago. All realities cease to exist. The only thing you get to decide is if you aid in the destruction or fight against it. Fight against it? But you said it was doomed! None of this makes any sense! This reality will fade away, and another will take its place. I'm okay with that. But this does not mean that you can't prevent the loss of future realities. How would I do that if we all die? Come with me. Escape into the soul space. We can take your friends with us. Together, we will protect realities from the ultimate loss. Loss of souls who perish with worldly attachments in their hearts. When a soul is bound to the planet by thoughts and obsessions of worldly things, they die with the reality. But a soul that is free of love for the physical, and longs only for the spiritual, can find light in the soul space. I want to watch Deva. But I want to save this reality. What about my mother? My friends? I couldn't just convince them to enter the soul space. I don't even think I could convince my mother that there is a soul space. What do you want to do, Alex? Whatever you decide, I am with you every step of the way. But wait, why is this... Why is this my choice? Because this is your reality, not mine. I just want you to be happy. Essentia, how do you know me? Why do you care so much about me? Because you have been in all of my lives. And at every turn, I have been there for you. Even when you have harmed me. I have always loved you. I would fight a losing battle for you. <sighs> what do I even say to that? As Sammy, you helped me when no one else wanted to help me. As Vela, you gave me back my music. The only thing I ever expected to love. Wait! You're saying I'm the asshole that used Vela and- Shh. Alex, regardless of how much you have harmed me in any of my parallel lives, I am always here for you. So what's happening in the, our world? Is Alex just sitting in the parking lot next to the van and everyone's just wondering, what's going on? I want to help you be the best that you can be. Can't you help me be the me that saves this reality? From whatever the hell all these things are falling from the sky? It is impossible. But if you would like to try, we may try. But how do you know it's impossible? I can feel the reality breaking apart. I can feel souls fleeing in every direction. This world will soon end. But there has to be something we can do. Some way to be strong enough to take down whatever is going to destroy this reality. Why is Alex the sole decider of reality? Even I am not strong enough to face what's coming for this reality. But what about me? Vela, you, and the others! It pleases me that you want to fight for something. I know this isn't your usual way. It thrills me to see this passion in you. Together, we can attempt to fight this ender of realities. Just know, we will fail, but we will fail together. Don't be such a downer! If I'm going to die, I at least want to go down swinging. What other choice do I have? I understand now that in your heart, there is no other choice. Perhaps you, Alex, are different from the others. I will stay and fight with you, but if we are going to do this, we must convince your friends to help us, and we must train. Uh, I mean, a train? You think I'm gonna grind? Even I am not at my most powerful. We must complete the mind dungeon before the end comes, and be prepared to fight it. How do we convince them that the world is gonna end? By convincing them that this reality will soon perish, and by making them understand that this world is just a byproduct of that destruction. Okay, so what's this great destruction that will be obliterating reality? It's the same destruction that destroys all realities. And yet, I can't give it a name. But when you see it, you will recognize it. It'll be the culmination of your ego. I think I want to go home now. Everyone's probably wondering where I went. Yes, we've been gone quite a while. Really? How long? Five days, three hours, and two minutes. Wait, wait what? Everyone's probably freaking out! L let's, let's get out of here. Chapter 5, The Y2K Prone. Title Drop.
So, uh, how do we get back to Frankton? Why did we wake up just outside the van and why did no one care? I'm not sure. Maybe we can take a bus? Just grow wings out of your back. Let's go. Ugh, bus! I really hate public transportation. Ugh. My mom never picked me up from school. She always made me take a White Hound bus. Maybe there are keys in this van? I have seen many realities, and this one is by far the least prepared for public transportation. Perhaps if you lived in a better reality, your country would be more equipped to handle traversing the countryside. That ignores the geo... geographical challenges of making public transportation in the countryside. Yeah. I'll, uh, get on that. I guess we just leave. Let's go. Wait, where, where is the bus stop again? Oh. It's probably here. I think. Essentia, where's the bus stop? Put in your GPS in your head or something and it'll beep boop. Bus stop this way. Beep boop. I can't tell if this was in your- Hey, it's- Man, the seasons, like, just go through themselves, like, oof. Isn't that what's-his-name's car? Claudio's? Claudio, my man! Drive me home. You're not Claudio's. What the hell is a Franken Popo doing here? Mom, are you okay? What's going on? Alex, where the hell have you been? I was so worried. Uh, ma'am, is this the boy you reported missing? What's wrong with your voice? Missing? You reported me missing? I haven't seen you for days, and none of your friends knew where you were. Sometimes a panicked mother is worse than impending doom. Uh, hey, I I'm sorry, I... I'm sorry, Mrs. Eagleston. Alex was with me. Oh, okay, you were just with a, a random android girl, that's fine. Okay, everything's okay now. That makes perfect sense. My car broke down, and he was kind enough to walk with me to the auto body shop and help me out. For five days. He's been with me, and has been perfectly safe. Who are you? Why do you have metal bits coming out of you? Why is your hair green? Uh, that's the part you're worried about. Alex, why are you hanging out with a woman with green hair? Mom, that's the latest fashion. Everyone does it. It's the 90s. Multicolored hair is the bomb, or whatever. Dot com. Yes, my hair is the bomb. Okay. Well, if you're safe, then I'll be heading back to the station. Another case solved. I am the greatest cop on the force. Have a good day. Stay out of trouble. I feel like they ran on budget for the VAs and just like, have the devs do the voice for the cop. I'm watching you. Well, now that you're safe, I can tell you the good news. I got a job. You can go back to being a loser now. Great! That's awesome! What are you doing? More programming. I got hired by Moon Macrosystems developing Y2K compatible versions of their software. Basically, I'm rebranding all their products as Y2K compatible and selling them for twice the cost. Y2K? Yeah, you know. That theory that at the turn of the new year, all computers will stop working? People are afraid the world is going to end, so we might as well capitalize on that fear. That's the American way. Should we be worried about Y2K, Mom? Yes. Be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> Not unless you're a machine. I wouldn't worry. 
Why would I be a machine? Why would you say something like that? What? No, I meant... Never mind. Why do you have metal bits sticking out of you? And robo joints? You're quite unusual, honey. Alex, can I talk to you for a minute? Uh, not right now. Um, yeah, we need to work on something. Work on what? Stuff in my room. In private. Homework. Oh yeah, she just accepted that explanation. It's a madhouse. Homework? Wow. You are not helping. I'm sorry. I could not resist. Okay, so you do have a sense of humor. <laughs> I wasn't sure if being part android took out the fun parts of your personality. I can be very funny. Would you like to hear my stand-up routine? Does it involve you just literally standing up there? What? Really? Now? The world is gonna end. This is no time for jokes. Knock, knock. Who's there? Okay, who's there? Y2K. We're all gonna die. Y2K who? Y2K. <gasps> uh. You're gonna be a villainess, aren't you? <sighs> Very funny. Okay, so, what's the next step? What do we do? We should begin by asking your friends to join us. Although there is a possibility that they may be smart enough to enter the soul space before the end. Do you really think they do that? It is a possibility. We must convince them to aid us, as we are about to die fighting a force that cannot be stopped. Okay, if we're gonna do this, I need you to stop reminding me that you think this is a lost cause. I'm determined to try and stop this. Whatever it is. Okay. I am sorry. I did not mean to upset you. I am here to help you with whatever you need. I think it would be wise for me to speak with Bella alone, as we are one and the same. Perhaps you should call her and arrange a meeting? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do that right now. Harris, I'm gonna murder all my soul clones. And then you'll be mine alone, Alex. And then I'll murder your friends because I'm jealous of them too. And then I'll administer the Y2K virus to doom this world. Hey, Vela. Uh, listen, I need you to come over. Remember me, Alex? And I killed your sister. I said I just like robot this. Alex, where have you been? We were all so freaked out when you disappeared. <sighs> yeah, come over and I'll explain what happened. Do you want me to call the others? No, I think it'd be best if I just told you this alone. I'll tell the others, but I think you need to hear it first. Okay, I'll be right over. You! You're the android from the van! Bella, this is the Essentia 2000. Essentia 2000, this is Vela. So what happened at the van? Did Alex just, like, disappear with the android, like, in the thin air? Boop. Hello, Vela. It's nice to see you. Likewise. What's going on here? Whew, I don't even know where to begin. It's so complicated. Alex, please go up to your room. I don't like that. I would like to speak to Vela alone. I don't fully trust oh. you yet. Yeah, sure. I saw in the dark, two floors below me, two women of the same soul spoke about the fate of the world. Do you know how weird it was thinking that? No, you really can't. Well, maybe now you can that you're in the same situation. One soul, but many people. In the darkness, thinking about the end of all reality. Knowing inside myself that all of this was true, these concepts, previously absurd, were now mysteriously vivid in every detail. To the point where I felt I could grasp them in my hands. Has Alex been addressing a player occasionally? I I'm pretty sure he has. I pictured myself alone in the universe. All things around me had been destroyed. The player was never Alex. Everyone was gone. And then she floated by. Sammy. But she wasn't Sammy. She was Vela. 
but also not Vela. She was the Ascension 2000, Oda, Yuzu, and Nyla. Somehow these people were linked by their soul. Whatever that meant, what did it mean to share a soul but be a different person? What did the Ascension 2000 called it? A parallel life? I thought of Buddhists and their concept of past lives. Before I was Alex, I was a pirate or a poor village girl living in Croatia. But in a parallel life, I was Alex, a pirate, and a little girl in Croatia. I lived all of my lives at once, in distant but similar realities. Similar was only an assumption. I realize now how little I knew about reality. Alex! Is everyone still alive? I have spoken with Bella and shown her irrefutable proof of my identity. I've explored the soul space, and I've seen the beginnings of destruction to many realities. I have seen the remains of many souls. And Alex, this scares the living hell out of me. I, I will do anything I can to help stop whatever's coming for us. You spoke to us in the past, specifically to Vela, about a feeling that fate brought you two together. I am that fate. This was meant to happen. I do not know if we can stop whatever is coming, but I know that we are meant to try. So what's next? What do we do? What's the plan? I'm still kind of heavily upset that all the other characters have basically been ran off and their stories meant nothing. Not that there we were like great stories in the first place, but still. And then we should train in the mind dungeon. Like, what is Michael's point in the story? Alex, you have seen what is coming for us, and you know better than anyone else. The only way to stop it is to understand yourself. If we can get as far into the Mind Dungeon as possible, and learn as many abilities as possible, we may stand a chance of dying with dignity. I already learned all the abilities. It was about like 10, 15 levels ago. I could tell because I popped a Chivo. Alex, what did you see in the Mind Dungeon? What did the end look like? Why did she say that? I don't know. But I know that it's related to me. That somehow I am the destruction. I might just be a piece of it. I might be all of it. I can't say, but I know I can stop it from destroying everything I love. Alex, I believe the best course of action now would be to go and find each one of your friends individually and talk to them about the current situation. Can we just like call them and have them all just show up and explain to them all and give her and get this over with? Remember that the better you do, the more mind dungeon keys you will unlock and the stronger you will become. It is vital that all of your friends are on board. Without achieving the highest level by the time the end comes, our futile efforts will be even more futile. Joke's on you, I'm going into the end underleveled. I'm still gonna win. But we don't even know when the end is coming! It could be tomorrow for all we know! Y2K? Could that be it? Could the turn of the millennium be the date? I don't know, maybe. What do you think, Android Me? It is possible. I've had a weird sense of impending doom ever since Rory and Michael mentioned it. That might explain why 99 has gone to shit. I've been looking at the newspaper a lot lately, and things are really screwed up out there. Well, I suppose having some estimated date is good enough for me. Alex, you can return to the Mind Dungeon anytime to see how many days remain. Wait, what? You mean the date was real? It's been so many numbers and zeros. How do I even calculate that into a date? I could not see the number myself. But if you take me there and tell me the number, I can help you convert it into days. Well, damn. Why didn't you tell me that sooner? Well, she didn't. Lay off of her. We're not perfect, you know. Is that your new thing? Referring to her as you and etc. etc. Yes. Okay, fine. Well, I'm gonna go find everyone and get to work on them. Wish me luck. Good luck. Good luck. Hang on, Alex. I knew I needed to find my friends individually and convince them that the end was coming. You already guessed that. You need to tell us. There was a loading screen for him to tell us that. A loading screen to go out of that. It's like in the, like a tutorial in an EA game.
Ox has to like voice out all of his like actions. Like, I gotta find my friends. Objective, find your friends. <laughs> Rory, the world's gonna end. You've had contributed nothing to the plot, but come with me. Hey, Rory! Yo, where have you been? Oh, yeah. About that. I spent the next half hour telling the tale of me, the Essentia 2000, and our journey deep into the dungeon of her mind, and into the dungeon of my mind. So, that's how the world ends? With you destroying it somehow? I don't think I know what that means. I don't get it myself, but I need your help. What's your plan? Suicide? <laughs> uh, just kidding, that's never cool. Uh, I'm thinking something a little less martyry. I want to train our butts off and be ready to kick this thing's ass once it gets here. When is it coming for us? I don't know the exact date, but my gut is telling me it's on New Year's Eve. All that Y2K panic? What if people can sense the end is coming? I, I know that sounds dumb, but I can't help but feel like that's when it's gonna happen. So what do you say? Are you in? What's the alternative? Run away to the soul space? I could never convince my mom or dad to even try astral projection. And I would never leave everyone else here to die. Uh, of course I'm in. Hey. What's up? Oh, I was hoping I'd see you. You know, I had the strangest dream last night. I was looking for something, something for my brother. My brother was older, probably in his 30s, except he had glasses and red hair. He kind of looked like you. Anyway, I was wandering around. I wanted something of his to take home, something that he handled every day or that had been close to his body. But it couldn't be anything important that he would miss. So I stole one of his pencils. You know what's weird? I feel like I've heard this story before. Why is that? Please don't make some kind of twist that like Alex is like it's some weird thing. All the missing people are Alex. They're all like different some of that realities merged. And all the people who like lost Alex in their own universe lost Alex in some some out there. I don't know. Connection. Anyway, I took the pencil and started drawing all over the walls with it. I kept writing the same word over and over. What did you write? <laughs> it was pantaloon over and over again. Pantaloon, 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 pantaloons. <laughs> so, anyway, my brother comes into the room and he just looks at me like he caught me naked, or at least in my pantaloons. <laughs> and he starts crying. <laughs> just sobbing. I start crying too. <laughs> and then I woke up. <laughs> Weird dream, right? Yeah. Anyway, I know the world's going to end. I'm going to do my best to help you. What? How did you figure that out? You'll figure it out. You're smart enough. You have all the clues you need. Uh, what? How, how can you just... <laughs> that was weird. Maybe my theory is correct. Somehow multiple realities merged. Each one from a different one that's gonna be connected to Alex somehow. That would make, I, I would say this is probably Michael's reality. Cause he hasn't, he's the only character who hasn't lost someone. Quotation marks. You know, I had a dream last night. In my dream, I saw my brother, but my brother was you. Cute little kid grew up to be an ugly ginger like yourself. But you came to me and asked me for a favor. Is that why you're here? It is. So, what's the deal? I'm guessing it's something serious. The world's going to end. I saw it in my mind dungeon. Remember the android from that van? Well, that android is Vela. Sammy, and a bunch of other people in a parallel life. She showed me all of these things, and I know now that the world will end soon. I want to train in the mind dungeon to be ready to fight this thing when it comes for us. You down? 
Are you serious? Very. <laughs> I'm down. I believe you, man. Dude, you gave me hope again. You brought a sense of adventure back in my life that I thought had vanished with my little brother. Really? I didn't know. Man, meeting you and your friends was the best thing to ever happen to me. Without meeting you, I'd be so oblivious to everything that's out there. I'm glad I was able to help. I had no idea I had that sort of effect on anyone. <sighs> well, <laughs> just let me know when you're ready to start training. <laughs> feeling of hope grew as I realized everyone I asked to help me said yes. Did I really deserve everyone's help? Nope. Not at all. Maybe this is why I was exceedingly grateful. I thought about Michael. He was the only one I hadn't seen since I returned from my trip into the Ascension 2000's mind. Where had he gone? Why hadn't anyone else seen him? Ah. Oh. Thank you, Michael. You went to the soul space, Alex, didn't you? Alex, come to the forest meadow just south of Frankton. There's something I want to talk to you about. I'll be right there. I think I got a car. Weird. I haven't been here in a while. Oh yeah, Michael is going to soul space. I figured one of them was gonna do it. Like they brought that plot point, like yeah, that's what it means. Stay there for a second, I'm seeing you a secret loot. Alright, you're cool. We can talk now. You better get some new upgraded Michael, skills. Is that you? Where the I've been looking for you for the past week. I called your house, knocked on your door, and no one ever answered. None of that matters anymore. It's so trivial. Don't you see? No, of course you don't. I wouldn't have a week ago. What happened? You sound different. You're... Voice is different. What's going on? Alex, something has happened to me. I am transformed. I've come to understand certain things. I've been exposed to the truth. What do you mean? What happened? Something happened to me. Something very startling at first. But now... Now it's just incredible. Are you gonna tell me what happened, or are you just gonna keep acting like Vela? I saw the soul space. I met a parallel self. I lived so many lives. I am everything. Uh, what? Alex, I entered the mind dungeon alone, and I wandered and wandered. Soon I stumbled upon a hall of names. Each of these names was etched into a door. Inside each of these doors was a life. My life. For nine days straight, I experienced what it was like to be my parallel selves. Alex, to experience a parallel life in real time is to become an oxymoron. To be something and not be something. Both at once. I am me. But I am also her. Or him. I have my memories. But they also don't belong to me. The very act of experiencing a parallel life is mind shattering. When we are born, we immediately begin developing a series of biases and defenses that help us ground our lives in the reality that we invent for ourselves. In doing so, we lose sight of the temporary nature of life. We forget everything. We lose track of where we came from and only look to the future. Experiencing a parallel life disassembles all physiological constraints that have been built up over the years. We see life for what it is, a three-sided box that only allows us to look forward, not back into our own minds where the true nature of reality exists. Do you know what the funniest part is? What? I know what you've come to ask me, and I know that I'll say yes, even though I always turn you down. Do you realize how many times we've had this conversation? It's like clockwork. I have a friend. This friend continuously hurts another friend of ours, and soon he realizes his flaws. He soon asks me to try and save him from self-destruction. Every time I say no, and every time you destroy our reality. Maybe it took for me to realize what not helping a friend can do to that friend. But I'm in. Let's win this thing. Michael, did you see how reality ends? No. All of my lives end with you destroying everything. 
but I'm never there to see firsthand how you do it. He just got turned on Sephra off and he just got called down the meteor. Crap. I was really goes, hoping I knew the that, that was that was why Ares was in the was in the uh, yard. It's a spin off the Final Fantasy. I'm surprised you're not alarmed by what I've told you. What have I missed while I'm away? I think you should meet our new android friend. Alex, do you feel the air? Do you see the stars? Their positions have changed. Did you notice the colors? Everything is wrong. This isn't what it was like. Something is wrong. Something is broken. Can't you see it? Michael, I... I don't know. Maybe... maybe things feel different, but... Dude, they've felt different for a long time. The very feeling of being me has changed. I can't really put my finger on it, but... Something is wrong. You're right. Do you ever remember things wrong? No. I don't think so. What does that mean? <sighs> Never mind. I suppose not. Let's go back to your house. As we walked back to my house, a strange feeling of nostalgia overwhelmed me. It was as if I hadn't seen Michael in a really long time. As if the Michael I'd spent the past year with had been broken, and now he was fixed. This was the Michael I remembered. In the cooling winter air, I had a series of memories returned to me. All of them involved Michael, but none of them felt real, as if I'd experienced them in a far-off, distant life. It is a pleasure to meet you all. Now seriously, is Michael going to be a lot stronger in battles? Because he sucks right now. Although, in a way, we have met many times before, both in the past of our parallel lives, and in the future of our parallel lives. I am going to make this brief. Starting tomorrow, we will train in the Mind Dungeon. It is now the 24th of November, and... I have no sense of but time movement. Thanksgiving! Thanksgiving? Tomorrow? Yeah, and so we should start on Friday! Like, the characters would just say, like, oh, week has passed, and I have no idea week has passed, because all I did was just walk for two screens of game. <laughs> Maybe that's the point, what I don't know. What about shopping on Friday? Just kidding! Ser seriously, seriously, just kidding! Many of my parallel lives were Canadian, so this is somewhat a surprise to me, as I experienced Canadian Thanksgiving a few weeks ago. Alright. Fair enough. Friday we begin. The promise of a future is something I'd grown to take for granted. Now, with the threat of impending doom, I realize how silly it was to do so. And what else could be expected of me? I've lived the past 25 years knowing nothing but a series of tomorrows. In fact, I'll do that tomorrow! It become my mantra over the past two and a half decades. Tomorrow? There may be nothing. Today. Maybe the last day. This knowledge triggered something in me to fall away. It was as if the core of my personality dropped away and nothing came in to fill the hole. It was like being hungry all the time except food, mindless fun, and things that normally bring happiness had lost their appeal. The knowledge that this was all temporary had stripped me of the ability to experience basic human pleasures. What I craved from a sense of normal. The desire to go back? No, that's not right. I didn't want to go back. If I went back, I'd be the same person I used to be. Selfish. Unfocused. Lazy. I had no purpose. I was a blank slate that was covered in war paint. I was going to defeat whatever was coming from my reality. Even if it was me, I would defeat myself. What that meant, I didn't know. But I was prepared to do whatever it took. I liked what I was becoming. What I didn't like was wasting time eating turkey, cranberry sauce, and mashed potatoes. It's 7.05 a.m. This is the earliest you've been up since you had that 7.30 class. And even then, you woke up at 7.30. Panda, where have you been? We have not talked to each other in a long time. <sighs> it feels good. I was so excited to get to the mine dungeon, I barely slept last night. Impressive. Well, get to work. Remember, you can choose to go to the mine dungeon or visit your friends in town. You can only do one or the other. We have about a month until the new year comes, and it's hard to do both in a day. Try and spend as much time in the mine dungeon as you can. If you don't train hard enough, you might not be strong enough by the time the end comes. Got it. Today I'll...
I don't know. So, I've been reading the newspaper a lot lately, trying to comb it for stories, little clues about what might be coming. There's something I've noticed. Has anyone else felt like the amount of screwed up stuff happening lately has escalated? What do you mean? Like, last year I swear I never heard about girls going missing, dying in water towers, people shooting up their schools. And now what? Michael, you gotta put on a shirt. I don't care if you're some kind of ascended being. Wear a shirt, man. I swear, every time I catch the news, there's a new tragedy. It's like people are going out of their way to find new ways to die. You gotta send it in some clothing. When you experienced your parallel lives, were there any indication that it's just this reality that's like that? Hmm. That's a good question. That is a very interesting question to ask, Alex. I am afraid that even I, a being who is aware of all of my parallel lives at once, cannot answer. The defining core mechanics of each reality is so different that there is very little point in comparing them. The norm for, say, my life as Oda, compared to my life as Yuzu, are so starkly different. In Oda's life, I longed for family that was never around. In that reality, families were not close. Whereas in Yuzu's reality, people lived with their families and never moved apart. People who did not speak with their families were considered to be outcasts. <sighs> Great. So do you think things are getting worse? I believe things are always as they've been. Only you are just now old enough to notice how harsh reality can be. We gain XP either way. Wait, is this gonna be- we have to like go for actually 30 days? Ooh. Is it weird for you two being the same soul or whatever? I don't think it feels real when you say it like that. I imagine that if Bella were to suddenly become me, she would feel very... weird. I am constantly experiencing the emotions of all of my parallel lives. I am often sad, happy, excited, and aroused at the same time. Or is there gonna be 30 days for her friend dialogue? Aroused? I experience every human state. <sighs> okay, moving on. No, no, I wanna hear more about this. Is this why you sometimes get a look of bliss on your face and stare off into the distance? That's when somewhere in a parallel life she's kicking your ass for asking such stupid questions, Alex! <laughs> Easy there! I wonder what I'm like in my parallel lives. I have to say, this parallel life stuff blows. Compared to the concept of past lives, this isn't very exciting. If we had past and future lives, we would get to be something different in the future. Now I just get to be me and not realize I'm so many other things at the same time. Perhaps you too should get an android shell for your physical form. Yeah! I could be like you. Except I'd have more of a personality. Perhaps my problem is that I have too much personality. As I am always dealing with a variety of stupid people at once. For example, I am currently a 12-year-old Scottish boy who just asked out a girl on his first date. What? Girl, that's crazy! I've only ever been Scottish one other time. It was not fun. Ooh, Scottish aren't gonna like that. Any way to tell what I'm like in a parallel life? Only if you venture far enough into your mind dungeon. But then you'd end up like Michael, so I wouldn't recommend it. I wonder if I'm a super kick-ass man with bulging biceps. Is that desirable? I don't know. Is it not? I like to pretend you're a really feminine and timid girl in one of your parallel lives, Alex. I think we're going to get along, Chandra. I like how they just have to put like a persona kind of gimmick in here. I guess trading in the mind dungeon would be... Let's you basically get as much XP as you want, while Time with Friends still gives you XP so you're not, like, under-leveled? 
Okay, so I've got some questions for you, Miss The Essentia 2000. Do I need to use the the, or can I just call you Essentia 2000, or just 2000? Is that your question? Oh, no, sorry. So, what happens when people die? Does death bring you into the soul space, or is that something different? You are asking a very complex question of me. The only thing I can say is that I do not have a definitive answer for you. I have spent many hours exploring the soul space. There, I have encountered many people. Some of them are parallel versions of myself. However, never have I met a version of myself that has died. When someone dies, I lose contact with them. I can no longer sense them. And yet, there have been times where I can still sense the presence of my other self. I have come to observe that the ultimate death, to cease to exist entirely, only happens to those with worldly bonds. Death never truly comes to those who look out to the future. So, what I'm getting from this is, you believe that if you die caring only about the world, you die forever? I would say that is a possibility. However, please know that when I say, the world, or, worldly, I mean people who care for worldly goods, money, cars, physical possessions. I believe that companionship between souls is the only thing worth caring about. In this reality, it seems as if people only care about themselves and what they own. In many of my parallel lives, I have encountered individuals like this, but never as many destined for the ultimate death. My sister cared about me, about my mom my dad, and a lot of people. She gave away her things before she died. I think she wasn't a worldly person. Rory, I am sure your sister was as fine a soul as you. I am eternally sorrowful that she ended her own life. Life is a rare thing. Many lives in all universes never take physical form, and to throw that gift away is a tragic thing. I think, I think I want to help people who feel that way. That I want to try and save people who want their lives to end. When this whole thing is over and we've saved everyone, I'm going, yeah. I know it sounded lame, but I believe it. Alex could learn quite a bit from you. What? Lay off. Okay, so we get new skills too. I might as well stay here. We don't get any skills in the mine dungeon. No, he got a new weapon. Okay, I have a very serious question. And I'm really hoping you can answer it seriously. I will do my best. Does my house shoujo Haru know she might exist in other realities? Am I crazy in thinking that this anime transcends time and space? Yes. Damn. I was really hoping it actually was as important to everyone as it is to me. No, I mean, yes, it does exist in other realities. In one reality, the three sisters are brothers. In another, they are three sea lions. Let's go to that reality where it's three sea lions. And of course, in one, they are all cats who are dating. Dating cats? But they're still sisters, right? Yes. That sounds so... So freaking awesome! This brings a whole new dimension! I almost want to astral project myself into the soul space right now and check out these various iterations of Maha Sojo Haru no Shiba! Ugh, please tell me you're joking. There is no way that this is a thing. I'm afraid it is.
Seriously, is it just gonna go to the end of the calendar, maybe? And then December is just gonna be a time skip? Hey, you okay? Yeah, it's nothing. Oh, okay, cool. As long as you're okay. Bella is lying. What? She just said she was okay. Man, I wish I could get in her mind like you can. You do not need a pan-dimensional mental link with Bella to see that she is lying. That's how it feels sometimes. I just wanted to tell you that you've come to mean a lot to me, Alex. You, Michael, Chandra, everyone. I'm so happy I left my reality for this one. Even if this one ends, that year I had with you and everyone else was totally worth it. I couldn't imagine my life without this reality. Without this, Alex. You are so very important. Alright, let's go. things like that, it makes me want to kiss you. But, uh, I don't... It's a tradition <laughs> at this point. To kiss. You... You want to... Kiss... Me? <laughs> what a strange situation this is. Which one? Dang, I didn't make a save here. Oh no! Uh, robot. Ow! I am sorry. I do not believe I am wired for such activity. Maybe if there was less saliva to conduct electricity. Well, relationships out with Alex. Alex, there is something I'd like to ask you, and it's going to be a bit tough for you to hear. What's up? When the end comes, and there is nothing left to do but die, will you leave your body behind and join me in the soul space? You really don't think we can win, do you? I am afraid I don't know either way. I believe we may have a chance. All things are always 50-50. It will either happen or not happen. What's it like to enter the soul space? Does it hurt? You are reduced to pure spirit. Your flesh dissolves. Your form dissipates. You will float in space, liberated from corporeal form. You exist with the freedom to travel wherever you please. You are adrift in the void. It is magical, and it does not hurt. So how do I do it? You must realize how unimportant you are. You must... Surrender yourself to the soul space, and forfeit your right to a physical form. Agree to give up your lot in physical space, and accept that you do not need it. Admit to yourself that your physical form is nothing more than a crutch. I don't know if I could do that. I have only ever known a physical form. I can't imagine not living like this, eating, drinking, reading, playing games. That's what life is to me. I understand that there's more. I really do, but I can't let go of what I've been trained to know. Maybe this is why you've never felt the existence of the soul space. You have never lost anything. Don't worry. When the reality around you is obliterated, you will understand loss. Let's just hope it doesn't come to that. Oh no, it is going to go for the entire month. So, I have a serious question. It's pretty deep, and I'm a little afraid of the answer. What's up? I find it unlikely that she expects you to answer, Alex. Obviously, this question is aimed at either the Essentia 2000 or myself. So, if each reality is drastically different from each other, what does it mean if two realities share a common concept, does this make this concept more... real? First, I should note that there are similarities between each reality, and then there are not. Some realities are strikingly close to one another. For me to answer the question, 
I will need you to give me a specific example. Perhaps something more complex than, if the sun is blue in two realities, does that make it actually blue over the suns that are yellow or chicken? Okay, fine. Does the concept of God exist in all realities? No. God does exist in some realities. In others, he does not. So, are you saying in some realities God is a present force that you can get direct feedback from? How nicely worded. And yes, that is correct. So then, if God made all the realities and yet doesn't exist in some, does this make God less important? Less omnipotent? If there is a God in one reality and not in another, why would God make a reality that doesn't have him in it? That seems pretty bogus to me. Almost like the people who get God in their reality are lucky, or less lucky, depending on how you look at it. She's lying. Who is? The Essentia 2000 is lying. She doesn't know if there is a god in another reality. I've seen many realities, and some do not have the word god, or have a concept of spirituality. But there is no reality that directly has a god or does not. She can't know the answer to this question. She is lying. Now I don't know what to believe! There might be a god. There might not be. Don't let a piece of electronic junk, no offense, tell you what to do. Mmm, maybe this is the foreshadowing she's gonna be the last boss. Okay, if she's leaving, I'm gonna get out of here. Way too many dudes. Alex, listen to me. Something is seriously wrong here. Can you feel it? It's in the air. The air is different. The light is different. Everything this reality knows to be true feels wrong. What if the his reality was just a mind dungeon? It's as if everything is in flux. Can you feel it? Alex? Look, man, I'm getting tired. Let's sleep on that. Flaming hula hoop. Hmm. I don't have the option to talk to the friends. I have to train in the mind engine. Maybe I maxed out the dialogues. Oh god. Hey, so... yeah. Look, I gotta go away for a while. I don't know when I'm coming back. Things... yeah, things will be fine. Your mom is a good mom. She's... yeah, look, you know I'm your dad, and I'll always be your dad. So... yeah. Don't forget that. Do I really want this slow-speaking crow to really voice out? important figures in my life. Look, things might be tough, but yeah. Um, crap, I'm terrible at this. Sometimes adults realize that they made mistakes, and sometimes their mistakes cost a lot of money and require a lot of food and educations. And some adults, like your mother, are better at providing for those mistakes than fathers. Look, you're lucky that your mom is smart. Smarter than I am. Anyway, sometimes the realization of those mistakes leads you to following other mistakes halfway across the country in hope of finding some dream. A youthful dream with nice legs. Only those legs aren't as smart as your mom's, but man. Anyway, yeah. So, hopefully this doesn't screw you up too badly. Just, yeah, you can have all my stuff. I left most of it here. It's like your birthright or whatever. So, my clothes are a bit big, but you'll grow into them, and then you can dress just like your old man. Try not to make the same mistakes I made. Okay? No, Alex will just doom the universe. It'll be a much worse mistake overall in the bigger picture. Why does Rory even get one strength when he does no damage? That makes no sense. 
Did you find out the question, Alex? No, I don't find anything, you dang slow-speaking crow. No. You're such a disappointment. Boy, can you do any damn thing right? Get out! Get out of my face! I hate you! I hate you so much! Just go away! Get out! Who are you to fix me with your brother? You know what? I don't need to take this. Don't you dare! Silly, pathetic. I'm not sure why they suddenly decide to split off the mine dungeon, which is just used for leveling, by the way. You don't actually grind in there. Into its own time consumption mechanic. Maybe it should have just been like... Go out and grind, or hang out with friends, and then you can do everything else. But apparently it's not all of everything by friends, and um... They didn't get- I only got a couple of ultimate weapons out of it? I'm not sure where the other ones would be. Uh, and also with the current, uh, the battle speed up build, something weird has gone on, and it seems like some of my characters do very little damage now, and Alex does an atrocious amount of damage. And I don't think it's just because I've been making Alex into a glass cannon, like, he will do casually 400 damage, so I don't know what's going on. I'm not gonna complain, it made the, made the grinding so much easier. Is it one of the last cutscenes? Found the dungeon master? He's tricky to find. Tell me, have you been enjoying your time in the dungeon of the mind? God no! It can be overwhelming. Never knowing if you're making the right choice. Afraid to act. Because the paralyzing fear that you've chosen wrong. I chose wrong once. I want to go away. Far away. Just to get out of here. To be on my own. Well, not here. That's how I wound up here. Inside the dungeon of the mind. I... I had a mom. But no dad. Mom got weird when dad left. Things were fine for a while. But before I knew it, life had changed so much, there was little to be happy for. Is there a VA actually Alex just to him deep voice and to like slowly turn back into Alex? So, I cried myself to no, sleep No, maybe not. Night. That'd just be too cool for this. I screamed every night. I tried running away. Never got very far. And you know what? I got away once. Far away. But I came back. I felt terrible that my mom was left all alone. So I went back. When I got home, things were better for a while. Then they got worse. Screaming. Throwing things. Accidentally on purpose, blowing out the pilot light on the stove. So... I willed myself to escape, and I got far away. Did I make the right choice? No. I'm asking you! Did I make the right choice? Is this better? Did I screw up? I can't ever leave you now! All I can do is stay here and catalog the Dungeon Master's thoughts! Do you realize how many thoughts he has? I need to get out. Can you help me get out? Didn't think so. Of course you can't. You're trapped here too. Just like me. I'm pretty sure that is Alex's VA. Just doing like a deep voice. Maybe that's like a, the, the point. Like, oh. The crow is Alex all along. Did you figure out the question? No. This is all pretentious. I didn't figure out anything. Me either. That's why I'm here. There are no questions here. No one to bother you to do stuff. I like it here. It's peaceful. Well, I think this is as far as I need to get to trigger a Chivo or something. Much how much deeper the mine dungeon goes, but I ain't going any deeper. <laughs> Do I really have to drag this out to the 30th? What am I doing that time frame? There's even no like point to the time mechanic because 
once you go out, you have as much time to grind and do whatever you want. It's not like Persona where you have like so many limited resources, eventually you're going to want to pull out or you have a fatigue syndrome. So it's either hang out with your friends or go out or level up. And now that friends are gone and I'm high enough level, I just wait it out. I guess so. Like, what's the point? This stretches out too long. It makes sense if there was more friend hangouts. So just be killing time with loading screens. Who let that pass beta testing? <laughs> And if there was, like, a lot of dynamic events in the game, it would also make sense to explore the town, right? It's like, oh, maybe I'll see new things. But no! A town has the same NPCs. They have the same dialogue. Between the end of that strange winter and the approach of New Year, my life went on without change. Hopefully there's a time skip. Day would dawn and I would repeat my alternation of spending time with my friends and honing my powers in the mine dungeon. It rained a lot last month. December's uncharacteristically warm, sweaty days only added to the anxiety I was feeling about New Year's Eve. Aside from the weather, there was hardly anything to distinguish one day from the next. Each day we trained, we hung out, we read the newspapers, we read about deaths, shootings, kidnappings, bombings. I worked at concentrating my attention on the real and useful, even with all my friends with me. Every now and then I would feel a violent stab of loneliness. The very water I drank, the very air I breathed, would feel like long, sharp needles. I could hear the roots of loneliness creeping through me when the world was hushed at four o'clock in the morning. Christmas was coming. And then, in a few days, the world might end. Could I really be the end? I was starting to love the world so much. All of my friends, my mom, even my sister. Everyone seemed so much more special when I realized how easily they could be lost. That was weird. Saw like a quick pan out of everyone hanging out in the living room. That's such an awful design decision. You just can't mimic something from another game without adding the structure of that other game. I literally have to go through 15 more loading screens. I awoke in the middle of the night. I thought I'd heard sleigh bells far away, like the background of a Christmas song. Chimes, maybe? A church? I sat up in the bed and felt for my panda. He was still asleep. He slept more soundly than I did these days. I sat still and listened hard but the only sound I could hear was the faint, dry thumping of my own heart. Months ago, I hated when my heart raced. It either meant I was nervous, or I had been forced to exercise against my will. That's changed. With all the time I've spent training in the mind dungeon, everything feels clear. My mind, my muscles, everything was coming into focus. I lived for the moments when I could feel my heart beat. I became excited for every pump forcing blood through my body. I felt alive. I was going to hold on to this feeling as long as I could. Where did that music come from? Maybe I'd been dreaming after all. I thought back to earlier in the summer. I used to dream all the time, but lately my dreams were fevered and confused. I missed when I dreamed of the Essentia 2000. I wondered where she was. Where did she go at night? Why didn't she ever stay with me? Where do transdimensional androids go at night? Panda. Panda. Wake up. Listen, I don't talk to losers. Let me sleep. Oh, what time is it? 4 a.m. What's wrong? Is the house on fire? No, I'm making chocolate pudding. No. Where do you think the Essentia 2000 goes at night? Probably to stay over a hotter guy's house. You think so? Think she has an android boyfriend out there somewhere? Yes, probably. 
Go back to sleep and dream of metal sheep. Merry Christmas, guys! Yay. Michael, you gotta sit on the damn couch. I don't care if you're ascended. You're not too good for couches. Well, tell you some more of a lounge chair, but you get my point. Wow, I can't believe another year is almost over. Don't remind me. So, are we gonna do gifts or what? Where's the Essential 2000? You know, I just remembered. I, I think I forgot. Um, but I think the VA for Vela is actually the same VA for, uh... It's a random trivia. I think it's the same VA for Audrey and Honey Pop. I guess she ain't much of a holiday person. Well, I call all her gifts. <laughs> Would any of you like to hear a Christmas story? Not from you, Michael. This round too good for shirts and chairs. Sure, why not? For Christmas 1996. My mother got my dad a computer. It's a really good one, too. He used to do all of his writing on a word processor. The ones with the really tiny screens where you could see seven or eight lines max. So anyway, my dad unboxes it and freaks out. He was so excited. And you know, I fell in love with it right away. Whenever my dad left the house, I'd get on the computer and play games, browse the internet. In 98, for Christmas, they got me my own computer. No one else has their own computer. It was amazing. I made a friend online. Together, we founded Onism 1999. Now you want to hear the really funny part? It was Alex from Ember Dimension. When I went and lived all of my parallel lives, I was him. Oh, you finally knew it with yourself. Okay. I was on a computer talking to me. Now tell me, how the hell can a computer connect to a chat room that is in another reality. Dang, Michael. Would it be a bummer on Christmas? Something is screwed up here, guys. Michael, now might not be the time to talk about this. Dude, this might be our last Christmas together. Or ever. And you want to waste it talking about this? You guys have to tell me you've noticed it too. Do you honestly feel like things are the same as they were two months ago? Two years ago! Or the fact that Rory's mom is literally a leg? Dude, things change. That's like... You're all intentionally not seeing it! The very fabric of everything has changed! It's like one day we were cotton, and today we're made out of metal! Things are so different! Can you give us an example, Michael? Okay! Why the hell haven't any of you asked why the entities were driving the android around? So what? We save her and we just forget about it? Maybe the android is bad and they were keeping locked away for good reason. Why was she in the van in the first place? Vela, you said it yourself. Soul survivors do not kidnap people. They didn't kidnap Sammy and they didn't take the Essentia hostage. Something is weird here. It's like strange things are happening all around us and only I'm actually noticing it. They... <sighs> Look. We just need to find the Ascension 2000 and ask her how her body ended up in the van. It's that simple. Let's finish opening up gifts. Tomorrow, we can sort this out. That's what we did. We exchanged gifts. But I was with Michael on this one. Something was wrong when I couldn't place my finger on it. I wondered if this was how people with dying family members felt. A sense of dread. But it wasn't a sense of dread I was feeling. It was a loss of self. A complete dissolve of everything I had ever known. The only thing that was a step beyond death. When people die, reality, the color of the sky, the sound of the trees, your memories, all remain the same. This was different. This was beyond unusual. Whoa. Oh, yeah, what has been Michael that's been calling? Hi, Alex. Uh, it's me. So, haven't you asked yourself the question yet? You know, the important one. Who is this? I think Michael and the phone hands are trying to guide me towards the, the correct ending, in a sense. Hi, Alex. 
Brooks, it's Sammy. Have you been taking care of my cat? Sammy? Where are you? Oh yeah, I've kept your cat in my pocket. I occasionally throw it at things. Son? Dad? Where the hell have you been? We were worried sick about you. You said you were just going to bike to Justin's house. Claudio and your mom are freaking out. Dad! Claudio and your mom. See? Did you figure out the question? That one was Chandra. What is go screw yourself? What does numbers mean? Hey Alex, it's Sammy. Did you remember to pick up my cat from the dry cleaners? Pick up a cat from the dry cleaners? Now you're just wanting to annoy me. Why can't you offer beings? Like, just give me straight answers. Jane. Hey, Roy, it's Jane. Did you know that I died and it's all your fault? They screwed up pretty colors in heaven. I wouldn't even have a voice. Hey, it's Chandra. Have you seen my camera? I've had the weirdest dreams. I've been dreaming that I'm a boy. Dreaming that I'm a boy. That dreaming boy, I'm a damn that boy dreaming? Isn't that funny? Isn't that You gonna ring again? No. Should we go outside? Hey Alex, it's your mom. When are you coming home? Claudio's waiting for you to watch some cartoons. Alex, it's Michael. Have you seen my hula hoop or my headphones? Also, I've been thinking about changing my hair. It's getting so big. Everyone was everyone at some point. At this rate, everyone was everyone. Hey! Alex! Help me! I'm stuck in the mine dungeon! What is happening to me? Michael! We do something about, about Alex? Alex, it's Sammy again. I can't find you. Where did you go? You left me at the elevator and you vanished into the crowd. Why do you always disappear on me like that? You know how much I hate that. I'm telling you, I sent you as the villain. Ooh, who were you on the phone with last night? I don't even know. Didn't I dream that? Man, I wish I dreamed that. Talk it out. Why do you think you are getting all those strange calls? Panda, you're not Michael too, are you? Everyone's I Michael. I have no idea, but Panda, have you noticed how weird things have been? You mean with all the soul survivors, androids, and long-haired punk kids you've been rolling with lately? No, even before that. When do you think it started? Well, I guess around the time I came home from school, for starters. And I know this could be just a coincidence, but I didn't see my mom for weeks. When I finally did, she changed, and I found myself saying some really bratty things. Mostly normal. No, it wasn't. Something is weird. It's only taken over 20 hours to get to this point for people to realize something's off. Where's Where's my dad been? Don't you remember? My dad worked for Pacific Chime. Not my mom. No, my, my mom worked for Moon Macro Systems. They met at that programming convention. When did my mom start working for Pacific Chime? You don't have a dad. Yeah, I do. Of course I do. Everyone has a dad. Then where is he? He's... and then Michael. When did Michael move back to Frankton? Didn't Michael move away when he was 10? When did he move away? Michael. 19, a tall, witty, brown-haired white guy. He was a few years younger than me, but I never felt like there was much of an age gap when we hung out. The summer he moved to town, we spent a lot of time together. I was back when my sister and I would spend the days outside until the sun went down, counting the accomplishments of those summer days based on the number of mosquito bites and caught fireflies. Michael had moved to the area when he was 12, 1991. 
the year Michael Stipe of R.E.M. sang Losing My Religion. It was a peaceful green street at that time. Not a single thing to claim your attention. A handful of little white houses with a few fences, a stream full of crayfish, a two-lane road they pretended was a highway, barely a yawn of a shopping center. That was it. Most houses had maple trees planted in the yard and brand new, not yet beaten fences. And there were all those giant billboards advertising the mall they'd be building right off of 82. The house he moved into was a mid-century model style built sometime around the late 80s. The exterior painted in three shades of green had faded handsomely in the sun and wind and rain to blend in perfectly with the surrounding countryside. There was a huge yard and in it several stands of trees and a small pond. There was a quaint little octagonal arbor in amongst the trees that had been used as a studio. Its bay windows hung with lace curtains faded into a nondescript color down by the pond Daffodils were in righteous bloom, and every morning birds came to bathe. The first owner of the house, also its designer, had been an elderly oil painter. But his lungs gave out on him and he died the winter before Michael moved in. That was in 1990, the year Billy Joel sang We Didn't Start the Fire. Michael was my best friend until I was... Didn't he move when I was 12? When did he move back to Frankton? Why is Michael back in Frankton? Didn't they move to Canada when his dad got that publishing deal? He sold his house, right? Didn't a cute girl move in there? Come to think of it, didn't you and Michael have a falling out? He moved away, you went to hang out with him, and he had given you the wrong address or something like that? Yeah, sort of. He had me meet him at a mall near his house, and when I got there, he never showed up. That was the last I heard of him. You should go ask him. What time is it? I don't know. It's dark outside. The clock says it's 8 a.m. Weren't you going to meet your friends to head to the city at 8.30? Shit. Okay, let's get going. I'm gonna go back to that fear I had. That this world is basically just a weird allegation world. Hey, Dad. Of, um... Alex, dear. The little girl next door who moved into Michael's house was looking for you. It's like an obligation world of like all the Alexes and the Michaels and all the characters and they're all connected to an Alex in their own universe. Or something weird. And then the, the Sensuous could be like trying to like make her permanent Alex. Like she's gonna try to get all the Alexes at once or something. Keep it permanently in the soul world. And that's what's gonna happen. Watch. Dad? That's my name! Unless you can think of a better one. Maybe something with more shimmer, like Antonio Bon Engelstando. You're the panda. Where's Mom? <laughs> that never gets old. <laughs> ah, yes, this is more like my actual town. This is a good improvement. It's a good improvement. I especially like the, uh... Oh god, I am Sephiroth. Alex's ego grows too large and destroys the world. Hey, man! What took you so long to get here? We've been waiting here forever! What's going on? We're going to see the ball drop in the city! Duh! We've been planning this forever! You okay, dude? You look terrible! Yeah, maybe you should sit in the back seat, far away from me in case you barf. Seriously, are you okay? Yeah, let's, let's get going. Man, tonight we are gonna party like it's 1999! <laughs> Man, I can't wait to kick off the new millennium in style! Uh, I can't remember the last time I did something fun for the new year. We should leave now if we want to get shopping in before the new year. How can you even think about shopping? Wasn't it just Christmas? Exactly! All the best stuff is on sale now! As we drove to the city, I knew something was wrong. Looking around at my friends, I felt as if I was looking at poorly drawn pictures of them, where the artist's crude abilities had just barely captured enough of their essence to show me who they were supposed to be. I looked back. Something had been wrong for a while now. Why did I feel like this? Why was it that when I looked at Vela, I felt as if I was looking at someone else altogether? When I looked at Proto Michael, I felt like I was looking at a beautiful image that was stained. His features were too rounded. Claudio, Chandra, how are they even talking? 
I looked at their mouths moving up and down and felt a strange detachment to them. As if they were speaking a foreign language without making a sound at all, I turned to the Essentia. Her face felt blurry and out of focus. Have you figured it out? No. What's happening? This reality has already started to break. But this didn't start today, did it? I see. So you have noticed. Only just today. I'm pretty oblivious to things I don't want to see, if you haven't noticed. So, would you like me to clear some things up? Yes, please. Of course. Give it to me straight. When someone leaves a reality, a place for a new soul to enter that reality becomes available. Our souls are in constant transit if we do not enter the soul space and take direct control. So this Michael here is not the Michael from your childhood. Proto-Michael is as he is a combination of all Michaels. So did the old Michael leave this reality? No. This reality is shattered. Lost souls in the soul space are slipping in and out of it. So, Claudio and Chandra? That is one I'll let you figure out yourself. It will be good for you. Allow me to start at the beginning. You belong to this reality. So does Sammy. When Sammy left, Vela took her place. I had a suspicion on that one. I took advantage of Sammy leaving this reality and forced my spirit into this physical space. Understand so far? Yes. Michael, like Rory, Chandra, Claudio, and myself, are important to you in every reality. When this reality broke, they entered. So, a version of Michael, Rory, Chandra, and Claudio all come to this reality. For what? To find you. To find me. We're going to help them. How? This reality is broken, and from what I can tell, it's been broken for a long time. I do not know. We must first see what form you take to destroy this reality. I'm pretty sure it's a meteor. I don't want to destroy this reality, or any reality. Why does it have to be me? If it wasn't you, it would be me, or Rory, or Claudio. We are all capable of destruction. We can create or destroy. The choice is ultimately yours. Then I choose not to destroy this reality. Excellent. Now, if only your parallel selves agreed. Dang, Michael, you suck in every parallel reality so hard you destroy all the universes. I spent the duration of the two-hour road trip ignoring the happy and excited laughter of my friends. I was playing the events of the past year over and over again in my head. I thought back to when I first arrived in Frankton. Everything felt so different. Seeing Michael again, it seemed so normal for him to live next to me. Then we met Vela, and that felt the most real out of all the things that had happened so far. I thought about Sammy. What had she been running from? Why did she leave this reality? Probably for the best. This reality has gone to literal shit. Did she perhaps sense that the end was coming? Was her reality torn apart along with mine? I thought about the mind dungeon. I had never heard of a mind dungeon before, yet I accepted it. Just dial 333 and you'll go inside a physical version of your mind. There you can toughen up and learn to do magic. Magic? I hadn't I found this strange. It was all so obvious from the start. This wasn't my reality. Mind dungeons. Cats with mustaches. Beautiful women who come in and out of my life. Mysterious pan-dimensional androids. This wasn't my life. Of course something had to be wrong. I had sensed it all along, but I was so intrigued by the fun and mystery of it all. Who wouldn't be? We found parking in the city without even trying on New Year's Eve. This yeah, really that's a was miracle. A reality. So what do I do from here? Weird. The subway? Oh, I God. followed my friends, wishing I could tell them how I was feeling, but I knew it was coming. What are these other locations? I 
didn't even know there was like a big city here in this place. Was this our last meal together? Would we survive the night? Would this reality continue to exist? What would happen to our souls? I wish I could jump inside their brains and make them remember, but... Were these even the same friends I was with the past year? And then we're going down here. One Times Square. Oh man, anime. This is the easiest to navigate New Year's Times Square I've ever seen. Defiance by Sentia. It's 11.55 p.m. We're all going to die. I don't know how, but I can feel it in my bones. This is how it ends. Yep, it's just the personification of Alex's ego crushing us all. Bye, everybody. What the hell is that? Oh, my God. This is all so familiar. Prepare to fight. This is it. This is the end. Okay, guys. We trained for this. What do you mean we trained for this? Isn't that Alex's face? Holy shit! Everyone! This is it! Prepare yourselves! Why was our normal Michael and a proto Michael? Michael! You're back! I never left. Holy shit! I remember everything now! What's happening? I hope that means you all remember what's going on here. Come on! Let's knock my ugly mug back into space! I remember thinking... This is how we die. What should have been a bright future is nothing more than a bunch of kids... ...who thought they could make a difference. A bunch of kids who fought a losing battle. Um... Proto Comet. It's only level 35. That's so weird. Check out my sick kids. from walking by the sea. There's a path I'll take with Can so I can I banish <laughs> Banish Just try to understand Why is it so small? This is not a mistake. I'll travel the more deciphering the code of the task at hand. I can't give you what you want to know till I know Where's the peace of the no.
guy's so destructive. <laughs> that pizza cutter. Banishing us. Why is there a meteor, Alex, with legs that's trying to kill us out of the way? Oh, you did no damage to it. We just slowly watch out as we all get banished. Into the game. There goes Proto Alex. No, Alex. Chapter V Epilogue. Enter soul space. It's gone. Everything is gone. I'm all that's left. How did this happen? How can I have everything in one moment and be so completely alone the next? I feel like that kind of happens when you turn into a meteor and decide to destroy the world. My world is destroyed. I am destroyed. What are you going to do now? We can live alone on this island forever, you and me. What do you say, pal? Yeah, you're right. That's a terrible idea. Where do you think the Essentia 2000 is? I don't know, but I really wish she was here. And Bella, and everyone else. Fucked up, man. You fucked up. Everyone died. You right, Panda. Oh no, it's these cutscenes. This is the one that causes the game to crash. I finally understood absolute loss. Video games, music, TV, expensive record players, all of these material things have value, but they can't be valued above the people in your life. Bella lost the man who hurt her. Sammy lost her mind. Rory lost his sister. What did I ever lost? Maybe this is the beginning of the game, per se. Like, the events here lead to the beginning of the game. So it's kind of like a little bit of a loop. It's a funny thing to grow up with everything in life. When I was four, I vacationed to Italy one summer. I did every year for the next two years, and you know how much I appreciated that travel? You guessed it. I didn't appreciate it at all. I met a kid in college who had never left the state. He said his parents didn't take vacations. I didn't realize people didn't travel. I didn't realize how much I had, and how little I had done to earn it. 
Now that there's nothing here, I realize. I realize what a little shit I was. I thought about my soul and whatever the hell that meant. Did I even believe in souls? Well, I did to a certain extent. I think the problem is people of a hundred different ideologies say different words. Soul means one thing to one person and something entirely different to another. I thought about my mom, my sister, about Vela, Rory, Michael, Chandra, and Claudio. I thought about all my friends from college, my past girlfriends, teachers, random people on buses. And they were all gone. Simply gone. Gone where? When you die, you don't enter the soul space. Soul space isn't heaven or anything stupid like that. It's the place between places. No, that's not entirely right, though, is it? It's the place between. The place between places. There was nothing left for me here. And yet, I was scared to go. But what was the alternative? If I stayed here, I'd die. I'd starve. I'd go insane from the loneliness. The only place to go was to that place between spaces. The soul space. But how? How do I do this? How do I separate my brain from my body? How can the physical and metaphysical be separated? What happens to a mind lost to the soul space? What becomes of it? There's so many questions I should have asked the Essentia 2000. You're now face to face with God. You can ask him any question and all you can ask is, what's for dinner? This is me in a nutshell. I lacked appreciation for those around me. I should have. No, don't think like that, Alex. There's no use in beating myself up. Is there? I don't even know anymore. Don't be so hard on yourself! That's what my mother said to me whenever I made a mistake. But was this the mantra I really should have adopted? Maybe I should be hard on myself. Maybe I'm a failure. Maybe acknowledging your mistakes makes you not a little shit! Oh god. This is soul space, huh? Cool. So just gotta follow the arrow. We're probably gonna reassemble the space, I'm thinking. Is the arrow pointing me this way or that way? I can't tell, it just looks like an arrow. I see... a Planet of the Apes reference. Panda. Panda. I'm so lost. Where do we go? What do we do here? I'm terrified. I miss my friends. My family. What the hell am I gonna do out here all alone? Alex, I don't have any answers for you. I'm sorry. What do you mean you don't have answers? <laughs> you, you always have something to say. Alex, how am I supposed to know what to do? I'm only a stuffed panda. Hey! Hey! Go come back! I don't care if you're a toy! I need you! Panda!
Well, now that Panda's left us... Are we gonna go talk to the chair? <laughs> Find a new... Inert object to kind of like add a voice to? No. Aerosane go this way. I'm not even sure what I'm like making my progress to. Can't see anything. It looks like a planet. You know what I'd be disappointed by? If this game doesn't actually end on the year 2000. If it like, goes past it, like a month or something. Looks like. A beach? Oh no, it's over Alex's. And they're equally as lame. Oh! That's, uh... Claudio's brother. Hey! Hey! Wait, wait, don't go! Oh, I haven't seen you before. Did you just get here? Yes. Can you tell me where here is? It's your room, of course. Is this the Alex that dated Vela? Look, I just got to the soul space. I, I'm lost. I'm so confused. I don't even know what we do here in the soul space. Ah, I understand. Well, we've got a bunch of the latest games from each reality. Some dope beats. So, uh, just kick back and enjoy. With my friends. And then something happened. I was myself. But I was also a meteorite. They're all dead. I think. Shit, are you serious? Of course I'm serious! What kind of question is that? Well, none of us have ever seen you through to the end before. You're the first, I believe. Usually we leave our body when she comes to get us. Wait. Who is she? Essentia. Well, the Essentia 2000. She appears to us, warns us, shows us what we're gonna do, and we get the hell out of reality before anyone gets hurt. I just do that! I thought I could fight it! <sighs> wow, you're a brave one, but, uh... It's impossible. Maybe she is collecting the Alex's, like I said. How could the decent few of us actually stand a chance? We've all got to merge into one Super Alex. There are just too many of them. Too many of who? Look, I think it would be best if you just relaxed a bit. You're gonna give yourself a panic attack. Whatever you do, just don't go to the other side of the rock. We're not allowed to go over there. It's gonna be behind there. Magician behind the curtain. What did she look like for you? Mine was red. God, I miss her. What? <laughs> did you see her? Is she coming back, man? Ooh, the android. <laughs> the essential 100. Man. God, isn't even worse, Alex. I was trying to think I made the bad choice. She said we'd explore the universe together. She said we'd see everything. All I do is sit on a rock with a bunch of dudes. <laughs> Sometimes I think I should just go to the other side of the rock. I bet it's more fun over there. That's so awkward. Oh, time to go to the other side of the rock. Uh, there's more Alex's here. Are you here to join us? Oh, won't you please help us? I stared Dark the Alex's. Void, and all I saw was myself. We are going to destroy another reality. Are you coming? Sure, whatever. This reality's... Reality suck. I made it safe. This is who I was all along. Nice, good ending. It's over, finally. Are 
are you here to- Oh, I stared into the- We are going to destroy Are you coming? I think I'll pass. I still don't get why the Alexes are wanting to destroy other realities. Are they just being collected by Essentia like toys and then like some of them get like, kind of sardonic and just stop caring? Thereby creating another reality that gets destroyed. That links Essentia create more Alexes or collect more. As I followed the meteorite version of myself, I felt something drop from within me. It was losing a part of myself. I was a burst pipe, and I was a plumber desperately trying to hold it all together. I was a metaphor for a metaphor for a sad, sad man. I followed the meteorite for ages, watching it destroy one reality, and then the next, then the next. Each time, it was as if I lost all my friends again. My mom, my sister, my dad, everyone I couldn't remember. I thought about what Vela told me about soul survivors. Was I becoming a soul survivor? I was the sole survivor of my reality. It would be a fitting fate. I tried with earnest desperation to hold on to what made me, me, a star in the distance. You're gone again. Your soul is destroyed. I don't know how many times I've witnessed the loss of a reality at the hands of myself. What could I do? I wasn't strong enough on my own to defeat so many. I was cold. I didn't have a body and yet somehow I was cold. Desperately, I longed for it. What was her name? She was a woman made of plastic. She was essential to my survival. How had she saved me? Why didn't I do? What was her name? What was my name? I needed to keep my mind. I needed to stay me as long as possible. But for what? What was I going to figure out? What was I going to accomplish? Why am I here? I desperately tried to recall my life. I arrived home from school, that I could recall. I met a mysterious and wonderful girl named Sammy. Yes, she was, oh, and then she disappeared. And I never saw her again. I made friends with my neighbor and together we met a girl from another reality. Yeah, I started having dreams about a beautiful android stuck in a van. Me, my neighbor, and the girl from another dimension met a kid on the internet whose sister died. We became good friends. I chased a mysterious being from another reality to a radio tower where it asked me to find a record. I made two new friends when looking for the record. The record turned out to be by the girl from the other dimension. We played the record in the radio tower and it woke up the sleeping android stuck in the van. We chased her down. She took me inside her mind and showed me that the world was going to end and that I was going to end it. Together my friends and I worked hard to stop it. My eternal friends. Friends who were there for me in every reality. What happened? We couldn't do anything. It's all over. Floating away. Floating away. I'm nothing. Sammy? Michael, and a save point. It's me, Panda! It's me, Panda! I knew you were evil, Panda, all along. Oh, thanks. Fifteen dollar dues. Twenty dollar dues. It's me, Panda. Entity key. There you go. Michael, is that you? Oh my god. Michael, come back! Wait for me! Shit! 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 Don't walk away! We'll need a Dolly key now. And it's dark, Alex's. Hi, 
Ah, it's the Mind Dungeon song. Without any, like, filters over it. So we never key. Three dolly dues. And I need the funnel key. I run all the way back. This is the case, like, I like this section. Like, I think this is kind of cool. But I don't like the key money buying puzzle. There's just so many puzzles in this that it seems like you're just there to chew up time. Dang, I have like one cent left. That's gonna bother me forever. By the way, guys, this might be awkward, but I'm actually your little brother. Hey, hey, don't go! I'm coming, wait for me! Chandra? Chandra? Don't leave me too! Where are you all going? Every time these little warp thing comes up, I'm just so worried it's gonna freeze and crash. How did I get here? How had I found this planet on my own? It's kinda like Earth. How is the meteorite not already here? Something is happening. Somewhere in the isolated recesses of my mind, like a warm light in the distance, an idea is forming. A completely human, genius, and kind intentioned idea. Something that no other version of me would do. And now my body is filled with that overwhelming feeling that I'm about to do the right thing. I always made a choice. A lazy choice. Not today. Today. I choose differently. We're gonna go and join the actual 90s, not the fake 90s. Nirvana, here I come. As I approached the planet, I wondered about the nature of their reality. Could I intervene? Was there another me in this reality? Present day. Before you answer, I want Manly. to thank you for listening to my long story. I'm afraid that this reality will soon end, and once again, you'll be destroyed, along with Vela, Chandra, Rory, Claudio, and Michael. I have drifted aimlessly in the soul space, 
and it is terrifying. With each passing moment, Manly, I lost a tiny portion of myself. Each time I witness the various versions of myself extinguish life in another reality, I lost an even greater peace, alone, tired, terrified. I saw everything with such terrific clarity that my own mind felt vague and boundless. Coming to you, asking for help. I think about how the Essentia 2000 must have felt first coming to me. It's even worse. We're not in the 90s. We're in the late 2010s. When I'm looking at you, and I we get have this an Xbox that made One up your mind long before I even asked for your help. So what do you say? Will you help me defeat parallel versions of ourself? Ready. I understand that in your reality, you interface with the soul space via a gaming device. Man, I wish I had one of those. That would have made my life so much easier. There are many things I have to tell you, but to tell you everything would probably take a very long time. Hours, maybe. Maybe like 19 or 20 hours with a leak for this game. I wish I could say how sorry I am for everything that's happened to you in your parallel lives because of my mistakes. Unfortunately, I lacked the courage to act in the past. But I plan to make up for it today. In my reality, I knew you all as Michael, Vela, Rory, Claudio, and Chandra. Here it comes. In many lives, you were different things to me. Names could be what but I names put in. and relationships don't matter. What matters is how much you've always been there for me. I want you all to join me once again and do something absolutely crazy. I plan on confronting Proto-Me and destroying it. I don't know what will happen when I get there, but I've faced this thing before, and I think I know what I need to do to defeat it. Or me. Or us. Me. And you. Michael! Is that you? Michael, why are you a character of the genie? Holy crap, you look awesome like that! Er, sorry, you're, uh, Michael to me. I don't know your name here. No problem. So, what's going on? <laughs> Basically, this guy Alex is Chen's extremely right. lazy in a lot of parallel lives, and his inaction and other appalling personality flaws are going to be the death of us all. It's a Is genie. that right? Dragon quest. Yeah, something like that. It's nice to meet you. Wow, you're a lot shorter than they are. Hey. Yep. Play it on that's me. That's all right. Guess that's one thing that isn't different in this reality. Yo, let's do this. I've always wanted to punch you, so I'm pumped. <laughs> I'm game. No, oh, see, because Rory acted like a paladin, so they are a paladin. Hey, man. So we're gonna save the world, huh? Wow, that's so fitting. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Man, I've always wanted to do that. Oh no, it's completely accurate. So, it would appear as if I succeeded in a parallel life. I can't promise that's also fairly accurate based on your form. But I can promise we're going to save this one. Okay, guys. Let's do this. And all honesty, the names aren't too bad, except for Michael and uh, Chandra. <laughs> this is going to be the hardest thing I've ever done, but I know we can do it. Uh, okay, let's uh go. <laughs> hey, everybody! <laughs> do you still have the same skills? I'm a uh, smooth jazz. Abstract LP toss. Yeah, so we have two manlies. We have a weaker one. They mimicked each other's equipment at least. Let's go.
Alex always knew he had a big head. These are all the evil Alexes. Here's Alex who watches too much TV. I don't want to fight with you. Go away. I just want to consume. What the hell are you consuming realities for? Why do you have to do this? I must have spectacle. I must have presentation. Come on, entertain me. There's no reasoning with this one. Sorry, Alex. Looks like we have no choice. Manly. Oh, I'm a barbarian. That's one down. It's grown angry. Let's get the computer hey, nerd out. Shady Alex. Hey, it's got two of them. LP talk. Wow. Get out of here. This is musical hipster, the Alex. The truth is, I'm not original. Everything I have to say that you found interesting has been said before. This is just the first time you've heard it. I am a quote machine. I string things together smarter people have said to make myself appear to have value. I'm the definition of pretentious. Forgive me. Alex is getting angrier. And this is it's too lazy hard. Alex. I can't reach it. This is too hard. I just want to sleep. The Dark Alexes are just the worst Alex. It's all united. Some kind of common goal. Go manly Alex, go. Isn't it weird the plot went in some weird way? Like, Well, not in the sense that I kind of saw somewhat what was coming. But more in the sense that Alex is so insufferable and enough of his universes, his insufferableness starts destroying universes. I don't want to fall on the path. I need a conformist. Wait! 
Don't go. I need to talk to you. No, Sammy. Honestly, this is going to be a little hard to say because I know how much it's going to hurt. But I have to warn you. Just beyond that light, you're going to discover something really terrible. Nothing I can say is going to make it easier. But I need to say this to you. I'm sorry it used me to get to you. I'm sorry for all the lies it told you when all you wanted to do was help me. Even though it may feel like it was all for nothing, I appreciate how hard you tried. You're talking about the Essentia? I'm going to go back to where I call home now. Thank you for everything. Maybe I should restore my stuff here. I know you. I recognize you. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, God, it's Essentia looks like Alex. Essentia? Oh, what is this? How are you here? I'm really surprised to see you here. I'm glad you made it this far. Is Proto Alex here? I'm here to finally end this. <laughs> oh, man, you poor, poor guy. What did she say to get you here? Look, I don't want any trouble. Just let me drink my tea. Come on, Alex, attack. Take him out. You've come this far. Jesus. This again? Oh, hilarious. Yeah, uh-huh. Brother Alex is Spike Spiegel. Look, I'm not your enemy. We're one and the same. We go through this every damn time, woman! Tell him the truth! If he still wants to kill me after, then I'll, I'll take my chances with a tussle. What the fuck are you talking about? Look, man, I don't want to burst your bubble, but she lies all the time. Whatever she thinks you want to hear comes out of her mouth. She envies my power. And we may all be one of the same, but I drew the proverbial long straw. She needs all the help she can get, even if it's from a skinny MC. What the hell? Yeah, look, I'll make this simple for you. I'm you, you're me, she's us as well. The division of our soul isn't exactly natural, and she wants out. If she wants to be the last one here, she just can't accept our little arrangement. I get it, but We've been this way for a long time, man. So, tell me. What lies did she tell you to get you here? Sentra. Is this true? Sammy? Ella? Was that all lie? It is often necessary to lie to yourself to get a tough job done. You've done it. We've all done it. I said what I needed to say to get you here. I'm sorry if I used the poor girl's disappearance as a catalyst. But would anything else really have motivated you? I can't... I... How... How the fuck is this possible? How could you lie to me? Alex... Won't you... Help me... Destroy him... Come on, take him out... You've come so far... End this division... End this strife... Without him, there will be no conflict... <sighs> now you know the truth... Just go home... I don't want to fight anyone. I don't want to hurt you. You've been through enough. Just relax. Take a deep breath and let me know what you want to do. I'm so confused. I think I'm going to go back to a save point. Nah, it's not an option. Did you decide? Will you fight? Did you decide? Will you fight? What do you think, me? Look, I don't know what to do, so I'll follow your lead.
I barely do not have a running animation. Did you decide? Will you fight? I'm gonna go for the pillars. Twisted. Ooh, level 99. We can just leave now the pillars are destroyed and like go flip switches. Run. <laughs> well, running's not an option. <laughs> There's the scripted attack I need. So it's a normal game over. Looks like there's more to it. Video game world? Hey Alex. You don't know who I am, probably. I have no idea who you are. Not a lot of people do. But I'm gonna offer you some advice. I've lost everything. Trust me, I really have. I know what it's like to do everything in your power to try and improve your life with a valiant effort. Only to disappoint your friends. Family and fan base. Life is hard. But it's important that you keep on fighting. You're not supposed to be here. You're not supposed to go on yet. I want you to go back. I doubt I'll ever get my chance to fight again. Because some people have worked really hard to prevent me from finishing my quest. But you still have a chance. Think about the conflict that stands in your way. Think about the division inside you. Tackle it with your brain. And maybe... Just maybe, this time it will work out for you. I tried my hardest, and I'm happy with what I accomplished. But you're younger. You can do so much. I feel like there's a reference here I'm not Don't getting. Don't let this be the end for you. <laughs> oh, okay, we're back. But now the switches are open, see? Look. Did you decide? Will you fight? You can stop laughing now. And... Two Alexes together. One manly and one just Alex. Okay. If you think this is the right thing to do, I'll follow your lead. On three, let's unplug them. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 don't do that! That's the only thing keeping this division permanent! Do not unplug us. We will be whole again. Don't do it. Don't unplug. Without this, everything goes back to the way it was. What's the way it was? I don't know what's going to happen if we do this, but this is what my heart's telling me to do. If you do this, only one of us will be here. This is it. Unplug them. I don't know which of us will remain, but I want to thank you. You helped me fight this battle. You were everything I ever wanted to be. That's true. It's over. It's all done. I'm with you. It's all up to you now. Sorry again for dragging you into this. 
shouldn't have been so stupid. Everything she said really got to me. I was so worried about hurting my friends. I didn't realize the difference between being flawed and being evil. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter now. Look out for us. Look out for me. Take it easy. So, I, I'm not, I don't know if I understand the final boss, like, I knew everything up till then. So the final boss is Proto-Alex, Pixel of Essentia? Was that Essentia also Alex? Or is it just two soulmates got kind of homogenized? Like, I don't even understand the message of that, even if I do not understood it. Maybe the whole, like, multiple existence soul space thing wasn't supposed to exist. So, did they all merge down into Alex? But see, then I don't really understand the goal of Essentia. Why was she recruiting the Alexes? Why were certain Alexes becoming dark Alexes that became into a meteor?
Okay, green new plane blessed here. Okay, let's start at the beginning, but all primaries always come right back to raw XP. No. Not yet. Hey Alex, you found me. Oh, it took you long enough. We just so much time to look if you made I've been here all along. In your front yard hiding behind this tree. Now it's your turn to hide. Oh yeah, I wanted to say... I love you. You have to try this. Post. Don't fall them blindly into the darkness. There's nothing but pain there. There's no bright future in that rabbit hole. Leave the plastic behind and go for flesh. If you can find her, do you forget what you came here for. Do you forget what you're looking for all this time? She's out there. Don't trust silicone and binary. Trust yourself. Trust your own mind. You only may be shared. But you can still see the truth in all the fake. I only wish you could have gotten this with my keyboard. They want you not to believe in yourself. They want to make you trust in her. That's funky. Whoop oh, oh, whoop, there's the flashing ocean. Now a specific place we want to go to. I think it's this one. No, down here. Do you have an appointment here? Or you need an intern? Please go ahead, you're very late. I guess I'm an intern of life. Exit. Ah, cat door. Oh, you must be Manly, the new intern. Hi. I'm gonna need you to do some me a favor, okay? First order of business is make me a cup of coffee. I think you can do that. If you can't make coffee, you'll never make it in the competitive world of local news. Now there's your NPCs. If you try to make coffee, good luck without cups. You check supply closet, I won't be with dead friends that lot in there. I have that. What do you want? You eat sugar, huh? Well, I don't have any. Try asking the girl at the front desk. Oh god, it's a fetch quest. We got a cup. Lactose living journalist. Oh, hi there. So good to finally have an intern again. Especially after the terrible year we've had so far. Now, is there anything I can help you with? Can I have milk? Oh, you want my milk? Sounds a little wrong the way you said it. Okay, but just this once. Contain two milks. And sugar, when a strange request. We check the supply closet. We should have some in there. So be careful, only people with dead friend. Okay. I got that part. Okay, we got everything. We need to make coffee. Strong. Oh, 
Okay, let me try this coffee. Oh, you little shut. Do it again. Get it right. Okay, you like wheat coffee. I guess I, I should have gotten a picture of that with the milk and the sugar. Got wheat coffee. Well, it's not bad. I'm pleased. Okay, now I need to find me a red disc. Go to the computer, copy the master file into it, and put it in every computer, and bring it to me to the disc. Also, uh, disc is somewhere outside. I buried it last night. Good luck, Manly. No problem, I got this. It's glorified fetch quest to save the world. So they said both endings were canon. So I'm assuming this ending's supposed to be gone second. That's why they referred to me as Manly. So all Alex's birds is one. Although not in the party list. Great, locate the buried red disc. Use a computer terminal to make a copy of it. Password. It's gonna be the one lower the level. Password, okay. We master file on the red disk. It's called master file. Great, you're doing good. Well, it's almost lunchtime, can't believe it. I need to go to the toy store and get my son a gift for it. No, I don't want to go to the toy store. Buy the most expensive and fancy toy they have. See if that really shows my love. Why is there a toy store next door? One thousand dollars. Oh yeah, I have like fifteen thousand. <laughs> this is really the best they had. I know it's expensive, so I'll show you to get money out of the desk to pay you back by the time you arrive. Mr. Jacob wants to see you. He's down on the second floor. I got my into office memo, I see. Please take this pink slip. Oh, got you, you're not fired. Boss journalist is. Go upstairs and give it to him. I'm gonna pack up his desk, don't make any big purchases, as he won't be able to afford them anytime soon. I'm gonna ruin his name. He'll never work in small local Korean news again. Hey, you're uh, getting a pink slip. I mean, I feel like every slip here is pink. A pink slip? How can they do this to me? And on my son's birthday of all days. Okay, Manly. It's been good working with you. I'm sorry you had to see me show my emotions. On my non emotionless face. Listen, I won't be able to pay you back after all. I don't have a job anymore. Thank you for your service. Oh yeah, you can hold on to this. I won't be taking this pink slip with me. Use it wisely. Pink slip the secretary? Such sad news about boss journalist. Just goes to show you can die when you least expect- wait. A pink slip? Wow, firing is very literal in this world. There. Oh god. You're all fired. Wild Ketsuban. I've cut Kata, you should be speaking with me. I think Ketsuban was like, what the, they call him missing no. Missing number. I was supposed to be deleted by Steven Hope that you find me one day. Okay. Stop. I wish I had gotten to finish this because it would have been a beautiful, much happier ending. Don't you think, Manly? Finish what? I didn't tell Mr. Quick I was hiding here. This is a secret. The publisher doesn't know we exist.
This looks like the... Yeah, this is where we met Sammy. Can you look at that chest that was over here that bothered me the entire time? <laughs> Here we go. Hi, it's Manly there. It's me, Sammy. I hope you can hear me clearly. It's always so hard to get a good signal from here. I know things got dark when I disappeared, and I know how confusing it must have been for you. To top it all off, I can't but feel that it was me that got you into this mess. Had I never met you, the world wouldn't be ending right now. I'm not saying reality wouldn't have broken. That had nothing to do with either of us. That happened a long time ago. If you would have never met that plastic woman, everything would be better off. But you kept looking for me just because you wanted to make sure I was alright. You were dragged into this mess. But I hope you figured it out by now, right? I'm not that plastic woman. I could never be someone like her. I'm not her in this reality or any other. That's just stupid. She's a liar. She wants something only you can give her. And she'll destroy the entire world just to get it. But I have a solution. It's so good you found this phone and I was able to reach you. It's not going to be easy, but I think it's the only way. Come find me and I'll explain. See you soon, Manly. Hmm. Here's the phone. Elevator again? Manly, hold on. Before you come in, I feel like I need to be honest with you. I want to see you. And I want to explore the great beyond with you. But you should know that if you go into the elevator, there's no coming back. You'll leave your friends, your family, and everything you know behind. But it's the best choice. If you stay, the world will end. If you stay, she wins. If you stay, you'll never see me again. So if you want to end this without destroying everything, go into the elevator. If you want to see through the end, now is your chance to leave. There's no right or wrong choice here. Just be sure you're willing to accept that you won't be able to come back to this reality. It'll all be over for you here, but but everyone will go on. Okay, I'll see you soon. Or maybe I won't. Just be safe. Yes, let's go. Alex goes into the elevator and rides it for a bit. Go in the soul space. Manly, you came. I'm happy you made that choice. Did you bring Dolly? I'm so glad you kept him safe. Take my hand let me show you where I've been. Leaving behind friends is sad, but I promise there's a world of beauty out there. Manly, I'm so happy we met here. Even if it was just a game. We'll be together in your waking reality one day, I'm sure of it. For all I know, we may already be. That's the ever ending. I'm not sure if I understand the story any better. We'll see if it's a epilogue scene. I don't think they ever had an epilogue scene or it froze before I could see it because of the bug. So that's it for Y2K. There is no epilogue scene. I already checked. So these endings are the endings. Does really make them any less confusing? I guess it's some kind of weird cycle of Alex's being grabbed by Essentia. Who then some of them feel rejected, so they become a meteor, who then go destroy another universe, which makes another Alex appear there, and some kind of weird loop to try to get one Alex to like kill the proto Alex. I don't, I don't know. The, the plot's the plot's a bit of a mess. And in contrast to my usual videos where I do the post commentary at the end, I am actually gonna dedicate a singular video to my post commentary, because this game has a lot for me to like say. And, for the most part, it's not good things to say, so... Stay tuned for the finale, at least for me anyway, of this series, where I kind of go down the, the vaults of Y2K. Till next time, I'll see you all later, and take it easy.